Uh, the uh, I've followed the concept of fine tuning for for quite a while and find it very um, very probative. And in the past, I've really worked primarily with philosophers and some scientists who deal with uh, science and religion kinds of issues. What I've been really fascinated about is 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 now we're at this conference of, of the physics of fine tuning, in which everyone are, are here are physicists, astronomers, cosmologists. A beautiful being here in Crete. Um, and it, it seems a difference that now physicists are talking about fine-tuning in a very different way. Why is that? Well, traditionally, uh, physicists were attempting to explain what we find in our universe, and we're hoping that they can do that from some fundamental point of view. Um, however, um, the latest attempts, uh, based on string theory, for example, uh, demonstrated that there are many possibilities out there. Uh, not only in terms of the conditions within the universe, but also in terms of uh, the basic dynamics of the universe, the fate of the universe, the, even the physical laws, perhaps. Um, and so, once you realize the diversity of possibilities, you ask yourself, well, why is it so special uh, here in the universe that we occupy? Was it in a way uh, tailored to allow our exist existence? Um, or is there a fundamental reason for it to exist this way? My personal view is that uh, we are byproducts, accidental byproducts. We are not too significant in the cosmic scheme of things. We will not exist beyond 10 trillion years from now because even the lowest mass stars will burn by then. So the universe will become dark. So here we are, creatures on the surface of a habitable planet, one out of 10 to the power 20 in the universe. Uh, we live for a short time. Uh, matter takes its shape in the form of our bodies. Uh, this is matter that was uh, expelled from the heart of a massive star in a supernova explosion. So we owe our existence to many things that happened in the universe since the Big Bang, but we are just transient structures passing by with no great significance. And obviously, if the conditions were different, we wouldn't be the way we are. Um, and therefore, from that perspective, uh, I don't think there was any particular uh, fine-tuning. In fact, you might ask, there is a lot of dark matter out there. You might think, this amount of dark matter is actually necessary for galaxies like the Milky Way to exist because if there was no dark matter, there would be no galaxies since the cosmic microwave background has no uh, non-uniformities on small scales of the scale of a galaxy. And early on, the ordinary matter was coupled to the radiation that fills the universe. So there would be no inhomogeneities, no clumps in the universe on the scale of galaxies from which stars like the Sun would form. So you might say dark matter is necessary in order for us to exist. But there may be a specific reason why dark matter is there, which is it's a particular particle that has some particular properties, just like ordinary matter, and it happens to have the abundance that it does. And we are a byproduct of that. And so there was no fine tuning necessary for us to exist. It's just that these are the way things are. Does that way of thinking help a physicist or an astronomer or a cosmologist uh, advance their way of thinking uh, in terms of future discoveries? As long as this line of thinking is real, in the sense that indeed these other possibilities are realized somewhere else, maybe not within the observable volume of the universe, maybe in other parts of the multiverse, if that's the case, then it helps. If that's not the case, then it, we are just illusioned in thinking so. And the key of science is uh, to have testable predictions, because we might be fooling ourselves every now and then, and the only way to find out is by having data from reality out there that is independent of the way we think about it, so that we educate ourselves. We are in a learning experience, and unless there is something that teaches us new things, that is independent of us. We could live in a theory bubble <laughs> where we think we know the truth, but just like the housing bubble, it yeah. might be completely fictitious. 
uh, where our ideas have nothing to do with reality and the real estate of science, which is talking about reality, may be completely overvalued in our theory bubble with no real reference to, to the truth. And in my view, uh, we should explore ideas as long as they are testable. And so the key is to find ways by which observations or experiments can test the idea of fine-tuning. And, and, but in that process, can the concept of fine-tuning uh, expand the toolkit, if you will, of, of the way you progress? Because heretofore, before fine-tuning, at least in, it, it was injected into physics, um, everybody looked for the fundamental theories that would force by force, by necessity, create whether it's the constants of physics or things in the universe. But fine-tuning is, 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 says that maybe there's not, is another way to look at that. Is that, is that helpful? Uh, well, it's helpful if indeed this idea is correct, that there are many possibilities out there. It's as if you have, you're given a screwdriver, so you have a bigger toolkit, but if you need a hammer to <laughs> nail this thing, the screwdriver will not help you much. Yeah, but uh, if you don't know if it's a nail or a, or a screw, maybe you need both. You test one and see which works. As long as you can test it. So I'm very much in favor of that, uh, as long as you can test it. 